So we have now uh, disassembled everything and we're gonna pour our reaction out into a beaker. See how much leftover magnesium is in this reaction. Hard to tell. Yeah, there's some pieces yeah. in there yeah. for sure. All right. So then we're gonna oh. fish the string rod out with our little magic wand there, the, the magnet. So we got that. And we didn't filter this so much. So at this point, before we wanna add the HCL, we can pull the um, magnesium strips out. So we're gonna do that to get, get rid of the magnesium strips, both by removing it as best we can with forceps or a stirring rod and then or filtration and then start adding the HCL. We're in the process of removing the excess magnesium by decanting. We've already decanted it once. We're rinsing off that beaker that we poured everything into with some more ether just to be sure that we've rinsed all of our product out and it looks like we're able to leave the magnesium strips all on that one side there. Okay, so now that we've gotten all the magnesium strips out of there, we put the solution, the two layer solution back into a beaker and we're gonna test that lower layer pH. And we see that it is a little bit greenish. That basically means that we have a basic solution, not too basic, but just a little basic. It looks like pH. Okay, 10-ish. 10-ish. 9-ish, 10-ish. Yeah, so nine to 10. So we're gonna proceed to add our HCL drop wise. Drop-wise, or shall I just put it that way? Or like half a milliliter at a time. Half a milliliter yeah. at a time. So okay. we're going to add little small portions so we don't overdo it. And you can test the pH after each addition. Okay. What do we see? It's now basically neutral, so that moved pretty quickly. It's just slightly greenish, isn't it? Yeah. So it maybe is maybe seven or eight now. Yeah. Well, actually, it's, actually, it's more like six according to this. Six. Okay, below six. four. We want it to be below four. And we want it to go below four. Yeah, we want it to be acidic. So go, yeah. she's yeah. added a little so, bit more. So I have added already uh, uh, one, uh, one and a half ml. Okay. Now I'm going to add. And the pH is going to go back up a little bit because there's still some magnesium floating in there. Yeah. Which I guess we could fish out. Yeah, you want to? Yeah, let's add that and then fish it out. Like, you can see yeah, as soon as you add that, the magnesium starts to absorb the... Your, your tweezers? Yeah, so we're going to fish that out. More of the acid and got the magnesium out and we are down at close to pH, what is it now? One. One. One, so we've overshot it slightly. No, it says lower than four. So <laughs> as long as it's lower than four. And you also notice something here, the solution got pretty clear, right? The two layers are pretty clear. There's not much cloudiness. The cloudiness at the higher pH is probably due to magnesium hydroxide salts that are not that soluble in the aqueous solution. But once you get the pH low, those all dissolve. Because the product is soluble in ether. Right. Okay. So now we're transferring our Two layer mixture into the separatory funnel for the um, washings that we're going to do. We're going to first, so we're going to go ahead and remove that lower aqueous nap layer now, putting it in with our leftover magnesium. <coughs> so there we go, the separation there. actually the aqueous layer that we drained off back in to get any product out of there that formed and we noticed also right away that there was a little bit of solid floating in that aqueous layer probably that's our product so go ahead and put the put the ether back in this to rinse that first because that's where the product is all stuck so we've got our 20 milliliters of ether 15 to 20 milliliters of ether there rinse that out and pour that back in to get any of the product out of that aqueous layer. So we're re-extracting the bottom layer with fresh ether now. Yeah. Oh, right. it looks nice, fresh. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And there's a piece of magnesium. <laughs> there's one piece of magnesium. You almost can never get away with it. Yeah. The magnesium. But. Okay, in 
in. That'll come in very handy in the next section. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and extract this and separate the layers, and then we can set aside our lower layer. Organic layers for their wash with bicarbonate, which we mentioned earlier. So we have all of our product out of the lower aqueous layer, and there is some bicarbonate solution that we're gonna go ahead and add. It should sink to the bottom. There it goes. Yeah. And we have a little piece of magnesium <laughs> still stuck in there. We can't quite get rid of it, but so be it. Right. So we're going to do a little bit of venting here. Give it a nice, good swirl. Okay. Wash the uh, Italy layer with 10 ml of sodium bicarbonate, I guess. Probably 10, 10, 10 yeah, sodium 10 chloride as, as well. Yeah. We didn't have that in our procedure, so we can lose a half a point. <laughs> <laughs> we removed the sodium. bicarbonate layer, and it's kind of fizzy because of that piece of magnesium that was still in there. And because it's sort of reacting with sodium a little chloride. bit of Yes. So the sodium chloride's not going to go in, sink to the bottom. This is our salting out. We still have that lovely piece of magnesium in there. Can give that a good rinsing. All right, so we're ready to drain out the last aqueous wash. We got to remove the top to drain that last little bit out. We'll get the calcium chloride. And we're ready yeah. to just about ready to dry this. So we're lowering the aqueous layer at the bottom, and then we're going to pour the organic layer into a clean beaker so that we can dry it, so that'll be the next video. The top. So we're pouring our organic layer with our product out the top into an Erlenmeyer flask, and then we're going to add our drying agent to the flask. So we have our scupula with the drying agent. Adding that in, give it a good swirl. Does that get clumped a little bit? Maybe mm -hmm. add a little more. I usually am a little more generous. <laughs> <laughs> on that, Depends yeah. Depends on how you started yeah. your solution yeah. out as. Yeah. More? Yes. Touch more. Um, yeah. There's, Remember, like you're it's trying. Partly, you're, there's some anhydrous left in there. Yeah, you're drying water that you don't see. That's what I say. To yeah. yeah. So it was, you'll notice that it, it, the solution is much clearer now. So and we have both clumps and and sandy stuff. So I think we're okay. I don't think we need any more. Okay. All right. Okay. So our now we are going to filter gravity filter our drying agent out. And so we've got our fluted filter paper in the gravity funnel. And we're letting that then drain into a beaker below. All right, and we can rinse our flask with a little fresh ether that we then pour through our funnel. So I'll give that a good swirl. <laughs> and we'll use that to rinse out the funnel a little bit more so that we get as much of our product out of everything as possible. Yeah. It's still dripping down. Okay. Another good swirl. And it should be fine for now. Yeah. Alright, so We'll let that then finish draining for a second and we'll add hexane to that and then start the evaporation process in the next video. All right, so we've added 10 ml of hexane to this and now we are evaporating this over some hot water. So we're trying to get this up to the boiling point of ether just to evaporate that ether off. So the water is about 60, 60, 70 degrees. We'll keep changing that water out and trying to get a nice evaporation of going so right now it's just it's just getting warmed up here so we'll continue this and show 
what it looks like. But first, before we start evaporating, we should notice what our volume is because we're trying to get, the, get this down to around 10 ml. So right now it's about 30 ml. So we need to evaporate about 20 ml off this. All right, so while my lab partners are cleaning up some more stuff, I'm monitoring the ether going off so I can try and breathe some of that vapor. You can see that with the hot water we have here, it can boil the ether with the boiling stick rather rapidly, and periodically we just gotta change the water to keep it boiling. You can see here we're starting to boil off a little bit of it. Now to show the very end of the evaporation, you can see that the rate of the boiling has gone way down as we're getting the last little bit of the ether out. And you can see that we're right at 10 mLs here. So at the very last little bit, we're, we've got around 10 mLs left. And so we can probably be pretty sure that most of the ether's gone. You can see the boiling just pretty much slowed down to nothing. I stick it back in there. Yeah, almost no boiling now. So that probably means most of this ether is gone and we're gonna be ready to perform the crystals on this now. Okay, so we put the crystals onto the ice bath and I just touched the bottom of it with the stirring rod and immediately the crystals started to form quite rapidly along the bottom where I've scratched. So you can see we got a nice amount of crystals there. And we're gonna go ahead and leave that back on the ice for a few more minutes and do a vacuum filtration. Getting ready to filter our crystals here into the vacuum funnel. Twist it, yeah, there you go. All right, so we have crystals that came out of the hexane been sitting on the bath for the ice bath for about 10 minutes maybe a little longer all right and then we're going to rinse our beaker and the crystals with some chilled hexane that we've placed into the ice bath as well those air dry for a little while and we will come back and get the product all dried and ready for weight and analysis.